Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric, thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up guys? So, we have here the long-awaited Ascension versus Mission readings for the month of October. I am so sorry for not doing getting these out for September. I really wanted to do that for September, it just, but it just didn't work out. Um, Virgo, September was Virgo season, and that was a lot. It was pretty rough for a lot of us. There was just a lot of things going on energetically in September that kind of, you know, didn't let that happen. But that's okay, because here we are in October, and we've got it for you, yeah? So this is going to be focusing on where we are currently in our mission. Uh, I'm sorry, starting with um, our ascension, where we are in the ascension process. But then also um, where we are in our mission and how the two of them are relating to each other, mirroring each other. This is going to be a mirror reading, okay? Uh, very similar, well, the same setup as I do for the Twin Flame weekly readings. Um, just with a few variations. The main one being, instead of focusing on the balance between masculine and feminine energies for the Twin Flames, we are focusing on our where we are in our, mission, our ascension process versus where we are in our mission, our personal missions, um, whatever that means for you, whatever it is you are here to do for yourself, for your life, your personal mission here on Earth as the human, blah, 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 this, that, and the other thing. And how those two energies are mirroring each other, potentially. Yes? So, for the reading, I have two decks. I'm using, for the, uh, the Ascension process, I'm using the Thelema Tarot deck. Um, and for the, <clears throat> for the mission part of the situation, I am using the Golden Universal Tarot. Yeah? As always, I will be closing these readings with some oracle guidance. So with for this one, I will be closing the reading with oracle guidance from the Lightworker Oracle and also the Crystal Mandala, yes? And like I usually do, when I work with the Crystal Mandala deck, I always recommend that if the crystals that come out resonate with you in some way and you would like to purchase one in order to um, work with it, you know, to help integrate the messages, integrate the energies, if it resonates with you, whatever, if it, it doesn't even have to be related to the message that comes through with the crystal. If it resonates with you and you want to purchase that crystal, I recommend that you do so. Yes? Okay. Um, keep in mind that these, this is a general reading, all right? So I'm channeling for the whole Lightworker, Starseed, and uh, Twin Flame collective group, whatever. You don't have to resonate with one of those labels because they literally are just labels, guys. But you don't have to resonate with either any of those in order to, number one, watch this video, but also to number two, to be able to get some sort of good information. If you have been drawn to this video for some reason, whatever it may be, chances are there, is a, there are some nuggets of information in here for you that you can take and add or, or work into your life personally, yeah? But like I said earlier, this is, a this is a general reading for quite a large amount of people. So please take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. I am absolutely more than 100% happy to do this reading for you as a personal reading that is available. Um, it would be the same as like the, it's a, it's a mirror reading basically. Just if you were to order, or if you wanted to order one, email me and let me know um, you want an Ascension versus Mission reading instead of like say a Twin Flame mirror reading or just like a regular mirror reading because the mirror readings don't necessarily just have to be for Twin Flames. Mirror readings can be for anything, okay? Okay, I think that's it. So without further ado, let's do it guys. All right, Divine Feminine, let's get into this reading for you, shall we? I think we shall. <laughs> okay. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the Divine Feminine Collective of Lightworkers, Starseeds, and Twin Flames. Please give us an accurate representation of where the Divine Feminine Collective is when it comes to the Ascension process, represented by the deck on the left, versus the mission that we are all on, represented by the deck 
on the right. And please show us how the energies of ascension versus mission are interacting with each other and possibly mirroring each other. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Divine Feminine. <clears throat> so starting with your deck here, let's go ahead. Well, actually, <laughs> both of these are your deck. Your decks, excuse me. But we're starting with your Ascension. All right, I'm seeing, I'm already seeing pink, okay? So I really feel like when it comes to Ascension right now, what you're working on, Divine Feminine, what you're working on is really integrating this template of unconditional love, okay? And it's, when it comes to that, it's really about integrating it into your life and learning how to express it, learning about what is the true expression, the truest expression of unconditional love that you can express individually in your life, in your own unique way. It's really about understanding, coming to terms what the concept of unconditional love truly means. There are many people, many, many readers, many people out there that don't necessarily believe in unconditional love. Um, and I understand that. We are in a three-dimensional world or three-dimensional realm. So there tends to be conditions put on there. Now, how I've come to understand unconditional love is, yes, there are boundaries that you need to put in place in order to ensure your safety, your security, your happiness, your own well-being. But even though you have those boundaries, it still doesn't mean that you cannot love somebody. It doesn't mean that you cannot hold love for somebody. And to me, that's what unconditional love is, okay? Regardless of what, where you may find yourselves, what positions you may be in, whether you may be at odds with someone or not, it doesn't mean you don't love them. It doesn't mean you can't love them. It just means that, you know, depending on the circumstances, there may be some pretty strict or harsh boundaries. That's all there is to it. Okay. Unconditional love. And now I'm seeing yellow for, for you, Divine Feminine, in through all this. So this is really a big part of your ascension process is learning how to put that into action. How to align your will with unconditional love as well. The, the will of yourself, your higher self. How do you align that with the unconditional love of the universe? All right, which is then reach pulling you into your heart chakra because now I'm seeing green. Okay, excellent. All right, one more shuffle for ascension for the divine feminine, and then we'll get into mission. And then we're actually instead of because normally when I do this, I start with the second deck that I shuffle. But this time I'm going to start with for this reading. I'm going to start with the first deck. So I'm going to start with the Ascension deck, okay? All right, so mission for the Divine Feminine here. A lot of work, yeah, there is a lot of work. But Divine Feminine, um, I really feel like the biggest part of your mission right now is uh, learning to love yourself. Um, and learning to express love for yourself and learning about what exactly does that mean? You know, how do I honor myself while still honoring my commitment? Where do I need to draw firmer lines, firmer boundaries when it comes to, um, you know, the people that I interact with in my life, what I'm giving to people in my life? says the Divine Feminine, um, and what boundaries need to be put in place when it comes to being able to serve my mission here, says the Divine Feminine. Uh, my feather has fallen. <laughs> okay, mission, mission for the Divine Feminine. 
Mission is going strong, though. That's what I'm hearing. That's a good thing. One more stop. Okay. Here we go. And we're going to cut the deck. Boof! All right. So, for Mission, Divine Feminine, you are set. Let me just fix my feather here. All right. So, Divine Feminine, starting with Ascension. Where are you currently? What are the energies of the ascension here? We've ooh, okay, we've got the devil. So, ego is the very first thing that's coming to mind here. That's coming out with this, okay? Ego, and um, as someone that is that does uh, identify with the feminine collective, the divine feminine collective, um, this makes a whole lot of sense because I personally, over the last, I want to say three weeks went through some cycles where my ego was just throwing an absolute fit. And um, it still continues to do so a little bit, um, but it's becoming easier. I know me pers for me personally, it's becoming easier to put that aside and focus on um, the growth and the progress that I have made personally in my life. Yeah, see, look, but then we've got the Eight of Wands, We've got Temperance here, and we've got the King of Swords. Interesting. We've got the King of Swords, okay? This is great, Divine Feminine. So what's going on here is, when it comes to Ascension, um, you're really learning a lesson about keeping your ego in check, okay? Understanding that the ego, yes, is a pivotal part of you, it is a very important part of you. It's not something that's going to go away. It's not something that needs to go away. It's not something that you need to kill off even. But it is something that needs to be what? Brought into balance here with temperance, okay? But other than that, other than bringing your ego into balance, what's also happening is you're learning to bring um, all the kind of chaotic parts of this ascension process, this lifetime, this world, this time, space, paradigm, all that stuff. You're learning to bring all that into balance and to focus on what spirit has to say or what your spirit has to say, what your um, process is. Learning to, to be who you are in the face of adversity, okay? If you've been going through really strong ego tests, and I will call them tests, well, I'll call them challenges. If you've been going through really strong egoic challenges lately, that's all in service of helping you come into greater balance with yourself, okay? Temperance here is also saying to you, please have patience with yourself and with everyone else around you. It's nothing, and none of this is gonna happen overnight. And instead of focusing on any, quote, mistakes you may have made here or there, whatnot, whatever, instead focus on the progress that you've made. And if you're not really aware of the progress that you've made, then it's time for you to take a step back and really be as discerning as possible and be like, well, actually, no, I know I've made some progress here with the King of Swords. What is that progress? Okay. The King of Swords is also an energy of being detached, yet logical, all right? Um, understanding even. It's detaching from the three-dimensional paradigm here uh, with the devil. Um, and then with the Eight of Wands, Swift movement, communication. Um, this is this could be communication with spirit, source, your guides, your higher self. Um, but this is also swift movement through the ascension process. For a lot of us, the ascension process is in fact speeding up. Okay, so the more progress you make, the faster things will go for you because the more you can handle. Okay, excellent. Current energies, first set of current energies for the ascension process. We have the Queen of Cups. Here you are, Divine Feminine. This is that unconditionally loving nature that I was talking about here, okay? This is you really becoming in tune and in touch with your intuition. This is your, intu uh, uh, your emotions um, becoming balanced, or at least you're working on balancing your emotions but you're balancing them with the King of Swords energy that was underneath the deck also, okay? So you're realizing that, yes, your emotions do have very much a, a, a very important role in your life, but they're not everything. 
You're bringing, especially with temperance here, you're bringing your logical side, which is the king of swords, and your emotional and intuitive side into balance, which is the queen of cups, okay? You're also, for the divine feminine, you're also going through like a, a, a psychic attunement. Um, as you ascend more and more, your psychic abilities open up more and more, and that's pretty awesome. We all, the uh, couple with the Queen of Cups, we have the Eight of Swords. Okay, now on the flip side of all that happy stuff I was just talking about, this is also you becoming or finding yourself trapped in your head. This is the ego situation that was brought about with the devil here, okay? It, it, uh, many of us in the feminine collective have been going through a situation where our intuitions have been heightened, our psychic abilities have been heightened, and so we've been getting insights into things that are not necessarily being reflected in the actions or the circumstances we find ourselves in in the three-dimensional world. Now, the Queen of Cups and the Eight of Swords, also coupled with the devil, which is crowning the reading here, is, is Speaking to the lesson of learning to trust yourself, trust your intuition, trust your inner knowing, okay? Not allow, learning to allow you, learning to, to realize that you don't have to be in a mental prison like this, okay? You can, at any moment, get yourself out of this Eight of Swords energy, but you have to trust and believe in yourself and the universe and your spirit guides, especially if you are doing things like claiming your sovereignty, um, maintaining your, your clear connection with source, your higher self with the guides, maintaining your protection around yourself, that sort of thing, okay? The, basically, the ego here is getting in the way of the Queen of Swords energy. I'm sorry, the Queen of Wands. Oh, oh wow. The Queen of Cups. <laughs> the Eight of Swords or the ego is getting in the way of the... Queen of Cups energy. And if this is happening for you, which for the most part it is for a lot of us, this is a lesson on how to fight that, how to combat that, okay? Second set of current energies for Ascension for the Divine Feminine, we've got the Hierophant, learning. I'm hearing indoctrination, but it's not necessarily like um, in a negative way. This is more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We are, or we are being initiated, initiation, there we go. We're being, um, we're, we're learning, that we're, we're, we're growing, we're expanding. You may even be, in your ascension process, you may even be finding it easier to commit to yourself and that which it, which it is you truly desire, that which you are here to accomplish, okay? So part of the ascension process is finding the strength the courage and the desire to commit further to what it is you truly want to be a part of or what it is you're truly here to do, okay? The Hierophant is coupled with the Knight of Pentacles. Yes, all right. So for the most part here, Divine Feminine Energies, you are really starting to commit and you're doing, you're taking the baby steps to really make this successful. You're taking the baby steps to allow this ascension process to happen. You are putting each and every piece in its right place as you get more and more information from the universe, downloads from source, your higher self even, okay? This is excellent, Divine Feminine Energies. This is really fantastic. Um, yeah, I really like this energy. Okay, for the ascension process for Divine Feminine, we have the current challenge, the Ten of Wands. Makes a lot of sense. So as you ascend more and more, and as you as you um, develop more and more of a light body, you become more and more in tune with everything that you're truly wanting and desiring here. You're realizing the, the, the burdens that you're carrying. Also though, for some of you, I feel like um, <laughs> the more you go on this, you go forward in this ascension process, the more burdensome things become. And that makes a lot of sense. And the universe is, well, at least it makes sense to me. And the universe is saying that is going to continue to happen until you really focus on what is important. Okay. So I'm being drawn to the energies of the queen of cups and the hierophant here. What is really important when it comes to your life? your mission, your ascension process. What do you need to hold on to versus what can you let go of? What is no longer serving you? If you are really finding yourself being burdened 
with uh, or uh, being overburdened where like there are just things piling onto you more and more and more that it's okay the angels are already the universe is already confirming this that is just like the lesson here of the ego your ego is going to flare up and flare up and flare up until you finally learn how to calm it down how to not give in to that energy how to move away from that energy and focus on what the, what's real and what's true. So when it comes to these burdens here, you're gonna find yourself getting more and more and more until you finally just say enough and decide to let things go. Yeah? Ten of Wands is coupled with, what did I just say? Letting things go. You're going, the Seven of Wands here, you are going to be burdened and burdened and burdened until you finally stand up and say, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. No, I'm not going to live that way anymore. No, I'm not going to be anything more than my truest expression of my most authentic self. You're going to be burdened and burdened and burdened until you finally decide to put in those healthy boundaries with the Seven of Wands. Yeah? Excellent. So, the potential outcome here for the ascension process for the Divine Feminine, or at least what's coming down the pipeline for you, we have... The King of Wands. This is excellent, okay? The King of Wands is coupled with <laughs> the Chariot. So look, okay, so as you go through this ascension process, and I really feel like part of this ascension process is balancing masculine and feminine energies, okay? So you've got the Queen of Cups here, and so now upcoming, you've got the King of Wands. In some cases, this could mean, this is weird, because this is... Um, this is really, this is a spiritual reading. This is not a romance or a love reading, but I am feeling uh, a connection coming through here. I feel like for some of you, as you move through your ascension process, you are actively going to be attracting a counterpart, a partner, a mate, someone, a king of wands type energy, male or female, it really doesn't matter. This is just energy. But um, you could be... As you go through your process, you could be attracting this kind of energy into your life, a soulmate even. Um, you could be attracting a twin flame. Now, outside of romance though, what this is also saying, because that was coming through, for some reason I really felt like that needed to be said. But the biggest thing that's going on here, especially when it comes to ascension, is um, for the feminine energies, there's going to come a point in the near future where you're just fired up and ready to go and you'll be really be able to take some serious, serious strides when it comes to going after what it is you truly want in your life. Like literally, I, and this, it's, this is great actually, this is really great because I'm seeing this flow into the next part of the reading, which is the actual mission, okay? And so I see the divine feminine energies being ready to take some action steps towards mission here with the King of Wands and the Chariot. This is really, really fantastic, okay? So let's get into the, um, the mission aspect of your reading here for the Divine Feminine Collective. We're starting you off, hello, with the Ten of Cups. Now this is fantastic, Divine Feminine, because this is saying to me that when it comes to mission here, um, many of you are going to find some really, really fulfilling work. And I, 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 I'm going to speak to this personally. It's ever since I really started doing these uh, card readings and ever since I started this channel, this aspect of my life has been incredibly fulfilling. Like I couldn't be more grateful for the ability to do this for people. Okay, and you don't have to be a card reader. You, you, no, this Ten of Cups is whatever, whatever would be fulfilling for you. Okay, you're going to be able to find that once you really get into your mission. Okay, we've got the Four of Swords. Ah, look at that, the Ten of Pentacles. Wow, with the world, Divine Feminine. I mean. Good on you, girlfriend. This is girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. It don't, it don't matter. Girl, boy, hey, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm male personally, and I'm of the Divine Feminine Collective. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, these are really good energies, Divine Feminine. Um, 
what I'm picking up right now with this Four of Swords here, you're probably in a state of rest. Um, mission may not be moving so quickly right now, okay? Um, but this is meditation. This is um, healing. This is taking a break, taking a respite, taking like taking a nap before you get into, um, you know, before you step back out into battle. Um, when it comes to mission, I am picking up, for the Divine Feminine Collective, I'm picking up an energy of, in this Four of Swords, working on identifying what it is that you can do in order to bring this Ten of Cups and Ten of Pentacles energy forward. Okay, and this is this is not just necessarily in your life. It's like, well, how can I influence the lives of others in order to help them find or to help facilitate help them facilitate this for themselves? Okay, that is what that is mission. Mission is about being of service. Sorry, guys. Hold on. A Sorry, guys. I had to pause there for a second. Um, But this is good, especially with the with the world here. I'm really picking up, and, and with the Four of Swords, I'm picking up an energy of really being in a state of rest and under, and just just respite and taking a break because there are a lot of things that are happening around you that are coming to an end, a lot of cycles that are coming to an end, and this is helping facilitate you to really move forward more on your mission. Okay. Excellent. So, getting into the current energies for mission for Divine Feminine, we've got the Three of Pentacles. This is self-mastery. So, when it comes to this energy of the Four of Swords here, okay, you're like taking a break really from too much action in order to work on self-mastery some more, in order to really get that um, foundation ready for you to move forward. This could be going back to school in some way, learning some more, learning a new trade, learning more about a certain craft that you do in order to really uh, serve your personal mission here. Three of Pentacles is coupled with, yeah, look, the Six of Swords. So you're really, Divine Feminine Energies, you're most likely, if you're not learning something new right now, you may be starting soon. Okay. Um, but in order, but in essence, you're working on self mastery in some way, which is taking you to calmer waters, which is moving you to um, a better situation in order to really serve your mission. Okay, and with the Six of Swords here, this could definitely talk about learning something new, expanding your knowledge on something, because swords are mental energies. So. Already, I'm going to say that the mission aspect of the reading is mirroring the ascension aspect because we were talking about learning from the ego flares, learning from the downloads that you may be getting from your higher self from the universe, but then also learning to, to put better boundaries in place in order for you to release any sort of burdens and really take flight, okay? And here we have that reflected here with the Three of Pentacles and the Six of Swords. The Three of Pentacles talks about self-mastery. And with the with everything that we're learning in the ascension end of things, here in, in the physical, the mission aspect is where the, the self-mastery comes into play. So part of your mission is, right now, it, for the Divine Feminine, is um, working on that element of, of self-mastery, of being a better version, of being a stronger version, a more balanced version of yourself, yeah? That's excellent. That is so excellent. Okay, second set of current energies for the Divine Feminine. We've got, aw, oh, look at that, the Four of Wands, okay? So stable foundation is really being put into place here. And this is being facilitated by all of the things that you're learning, okay? Um, with the Six of Swords here, I feel like some of you might be moving into a space that would be much more conducive to your mission work, which is so crazy because I personally have moved have moved in my own apartment. I'm moving from one room to the next, and it's a little bit of a bigger room, and it's going to help, you know, it's going to be better for me. So that's great. That's really cool. Okay, uh, Four of Wands is coupled with 
Ah, here's the mirroring, the Ten of Wands. Okay, so there are things that were burdening you and you're actively working on clearing those away. Now, some of you might be faced with the fact that your home life might be too burdensome when it comes to your mission work or what it, what it is you want to do with your life and what you're here for. And so this could be why you're actively moving, okay? But also, it's, it's a matter of um, releasing those burdens in order for that, that four of wands or that foundation to um, really take hold and be stable. And that's a good thing. Okay, the current challenge when it comes to mission. Answering the call. Well, gee, that's, <laughs> that's pretty simple, right? The ju with judgment here. Judgment is coupled with the king of cups. My, my. For some of you, the current challenge is doing the work to balance masculine and feminine energy. The current challenge is also to do the work to get yourself into a better position in order to attract a soulmate, in order to... What's the word I'm looking for here? Give me a second, guys. I'm just kind of channeling for the moment. Um, This is mostly for twin flames, what I'm getting right now, but it doesn't have to be because a twin flame relationship is very similar to a divine partnership to me. Um, not everyone is, is a twin flame, but I do believe everyone has the ability to attract a divine partner. What's a divine partner? Basically a divine, to me, in my opinion, a divine partner is when basically the, when spirit or the universe plays matchmaker. Um, and in order to do that, you need to raise your vibration high enough you need to clear away baggage, triggers, and become whole and heal yourself, okay? And so this is what I'm getting with judgment and the King of Cups for a lot of you. Because a lot of us do, yes, we want some sort of romantic relationship. But the, the best way to do that is to basically clean up your vibration, clean house. And that's what I'm seeing with judgment and the King of Cups is to get yourself ready to prepare yourself to love yourself so that someone else can come in and love you, okay? But looky here, looky, looky here, y'all, looky, looky here, we've got the Queen of Cups in the mission, I'm sorry, in the ascension process, and now we've got the King of Cups in the mission process. So aside from attracting a partner, this could be an element of becoming emotionally mature, becoming emotionally open on a more healthier way. This is the action taken in the emotional realm, inspired by the intuitive nature or the Queen of Cups. I hope that's coming across correctly. I don't. I'm having trouble putting that into words currently. But um, so in the ascension process here, we have the intuition that's doing the work to give you the inspiration, right? When we come to the mission aspect of it, this is where we take action. And that is what the King of Cups talks about here. It's a, it's to me, it, the, to me, the King of Cups is the action orient, orient is the the action orientation when it comes to what is emotionally fulfilling to us or what could be emotionally driven, passion, com, uh, compassionately driven, like that. So the challenge here is answering the call and taking action when it comes to what is emotionally fulfilling for you, a especially with the Ten of Cups here and the Ten of Pentacles. Okay. Okay, uh, what's coming down the pipeline when it comes to mission, uh, uh, potential outcome, what we can expect for the Divine Feminine Collective, we've got the Nine of Pentacles. Well, that's pretty beautiful, okay? Being self-secure, self-sufficient, independent, and ready to go. Yeah, being able, to be in a position to really serve your mission. Um, the Knight, I'm sorry, the Nine of Pentacles in this case, to me, is speaking to becoming whole, being a whole and complete being, and being able to be of service to people in that sense. Nine of Pentacles is coupled with <laughs> the five, I just sound like Winnie the Pooh, the five of wands. So I'm picking up that there's still a bit of confusion when it comes to which way to go 
well, what is my mission? What am I supposed to be doing here? The thing I do like about this, even though there's some confusion, a little bit of chaos, with this Nine of Pentacles situation here, you're really in a good place to figure this out, okay? Because you've gotten to the point where you're stable, you're grounded, and you're ready to take some action. You're ready to make some movement, okay? You just got to really iron out what that is exactly. And that's going to come with time. And I do feel like that is part of what Temperance is saying here for you, okay? The more you balance out, the more you, and like that, the easier, it, the better it will be for you to make this decision, okay? So, we're going to move to the Crystal Mandala deck now for the Divine Feminine Collective. Divine Feminine Collective in terms of Ascension versus Mission. Best messages, please, Spirit. Here we go. Woo. Okay, we're going to take these two. And that's enough. All right. So you guys probably can see that already, but we've got Goddess Freya and Amber, the Untamed. And we also have uh, Ascended Master Kuthumi and Moss Agate, Sacred Ecosystem. All right, getting into the book here, card number 26 and card number 48. So we're going to start with card number 26, Sacred Ecosystem. And this is uh, Moss Agate. We bring you the blessing of the sacred ecosystem. This is a gift of conscious connection, supportive relationship, and magnetism, which attracts to you the souls in need of your light. Where, where you once may have felt as though you were not in the right place, this blessing shall now rectify that. You are meant to belong and contribute freely to your true soul community. You are destined to feel as though you have found your way home and can attract and be attracted to those that can support you and benefit from your support too. As you let go of past rejection of the belief you have to accomplish your divine life mission on your own or fight to have your place in the world, you will allow the power of this sacred ecosystem to transform your life. Your life purpose shall flourish and, you exper and your experience of conscious connection with the world around you will heal your heart and soothe your soul. That's pretty beautiful. Pretty beautiful. Okay, for the untamed, card number 48, we have uh, Amber is what's on this card. The untamed. We bring you the empowerment of the untamed. To be untamed is to be true to oneself without condition. It is freedom, but it is not always easy. There are many belief systems, some of which are considered to be essential and beyond question to mainstream human society, which would mark an untamed spirit as a dangerous and suspicious creature, even though that untamed spirit serves unconditional love. Yet to be untamed is the only way to discover who you are and live your divine destiny. Behind the clothing, the social masks, and the stories you tell yourself, or that others tell you, there is a beautiful, wild, divine creature that wants out. Uncage that divinity and watch your wild beauty immerse, emerge as you and your world transform through raw grace. That's excellent. And that is speaking directly to the message that was coming through with the Ten of Wands and the Seven of Wands in your ascension process, Divine Feminine, being authentic to who you are, learning to release yourself from the burdens and to place those healthy boundaries in, in, in place. Yeah? 
It's fantastic. All right, so finally, to close out the reading, we are going to get some Oracle guidance from the Lightworker Oracle. message for the Divine Feminine in terms of mission or ascension versus mission, excuse me. Closing message, please, Spirit for the Divine Feminine Collective. Closing message. There we go. Okay. Dark Angel, card number 30. And yeah, that actually, that's pretty fitting. Card number 30, Dark Angel. Okay, let's see here. Dark Angel. The Dark Angel comes to you with a radical truth. Divine love is always there for you, without exception. Love will never forget you. It will never stop caring for you. Even when it seems most unlikely, in fact, especially then, the divine is reaching for you and nurturing you. Even our wounds are ways that we can discover love and divine grace through the healing process. The divine is always helping you remember who you are and find your true joy. When the dark angel appears, you are being given a gift of light, even if it may seem to be a hidden blessing. Bam. I'm just going to leave it there, guys. Okay. So, there you have it. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope this resonated with you. Please. Oh, wait, wait, wait. let me do this. Hey. So, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, if you would like to order a personal reading with me, all the information for that is in the description box below. If you would like one of these personal readings... Um, oh, I'm sorry, the world was at the bottom of the mission deck. Sorry, guys. Um, but if you would like to order this as a personal reading, this is available just or ask for an Ascension versus Mission uh, mirror reading, and we can do that for you. Yeah? Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Much love to you. Take care, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Mwah! Bye!